Hello and welcome back to the Profunctionist channel. So today we are looking at an amp and the amp in question is my Mesa Boogie Mark 535. So as the name suggests, it is a 35 watt amp and it is the sibling, the smaller sibling of the bigger 90 watt version, the Mark V. So despite being the smaller sibling, it still comes with a foot switch, which is very handy. As you can see, we've got a channel switching here. You can switch the EQ on and off. And we've got two separate solo switches for each of the two channels. And as well as the foot switch, it comes in a combo version, which is what I have here. You can also have it in a head version. There is also the Mark 525, which is also available as a head and more recently a combo version, which I think only has a 10 inch speaker in it, as opposed to the 12 inch speaker in, in this one by 12. For anyone interested, I bought mine a few years ago before Gibson bought out Mesa Boogie. So uh, yeah, do with that information what you will. So I thought today I would talk about five things that I like about the Mesa Boogie Mark 535. Let's go. And just very quickly before we get into these five things that I like about this amp, if you do like the video you're watching, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support me even more, please feel free to subscribe. Subscription's always good. Uh, and if you really want to show your support, uh, I have a Buy Me A Coffee page, which will be in the uh, description uh, below, where you can also uh, f find a link for my Helix presets if you choose to download them. They are for free and you can always give back by buying me a coffee. Anyway, let's get into the first thing I like about the Mark 535. So number one, I really like the tonal options you have on the Mark 535. There are two channels, a clean channel and a, a distorted channel, and each channel has three modes that you can choose from. Currently on the clean channel, let's have a quick listen. Actually, before we have a, we have a quick listen, the three modes in the clean channel are, so one's called clean, one's called fat, and one's called crunch. I'm currently on the fat channel or mode because I have a Telecaster here with the single call pickups and the fat mode really kind of thickens up those single coil pickups um, a bit to make it just a bit more meatier. So if you have humbuckers, you might want to go for just a normal clean channel, and we'll talk about the, the crunch channel in a sec. But here's my current um, tone on the fat channel. <laughs> And let's compare that with just the normal clean channel uh, that isn't well fattened up. Uh, let me pick, let's go to the neck pickup for this one. That was the fat. This is the clean. You can hear it's a lot thinner, which will probably work very well for humbuckers. Fat. There you go. And let's check out this crunch channel. This might be my favourite channel on the whole amp, actually. Gain it down a little bit to see how that sounds. If you want a kind of slightly kind of edge of breakup kind of sound. If I was to gain it up from kind of more of like a lead solo-y type of uh, tone. Yeah, I love it. Depending on my mood, that's probably my favourite channel, I think, on the amp, obviously depending what I'm playing. Uh, let me dial it back again. So those are the clean 
the, the modes in the clean channel. Here are the modes on the distorted channel. So I'll start with the first one. So we got the Mark uh, Two C Plus, famous amp. Uh, the Mark Four, and the third mode is called Insane. So just a quick bit of history here. The Mark Five amp in general, both the original ninety watt version and this version. Uh, the Mark V is based uh, is like a collection of the previous Mark amps. It's like a greatest hits uh, of the Mark series that Mesa Boogie, Mesa Boogie have made over the years. So that's kind of the whole point of the of the uh, Mark V. So that's why we've got the Mark Two C Plus, which is a very famous amp, famously used by Metallica on their Master of Puppets album, if I remember correctly. Mark IV, which is obviously. The previous mark and insane which i believe is essentially the mark 5 sound so let's check these out let's go to mark um 2c plus mode give it more gain because i'm sure that's what you guys want to hear Give it more gain. You'll notice I have the uh, the EQs kind of set mainly, uh, most of them set to straight up midday, which I generally find sounds the best. I think Mesa Boogie have designed their amps to be the sound that they've envisioned when you put everything at 12 o'clock. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how they've uh, how they've done it. Uh, anyway, let's check out the Mark IV. It should, it's slightly thicker. This is that usually my favourite uh, mode of the uh, the three modes in the uh, in the drive channel. So here's the Mark II C Plus again. Mark IV. Let's check out the insane mode. I believe this is louder. I think it'll be louder than the previous ones when I click to it. Let's see if the noise is more. Is there's more noise? Oh, there's less noise actually. All right, let's have a listen to this one. <laughs> that is louder. I don't know if that comes across uh, on in YouTube land, but definitely sitting next to it, that is a lot louder than the previous two modes. Uh, and I believe this is probably slightly gainier as well. Let's do some chords. Very nice. I will frame one thing I don't like about this amp here, or something that I wish that this amp had, which is to be able to switch between the modes on the foot switch, so I don't have to physically go over to the amp and and change the mode when I when I'm on stage. Ideally, I'd like to have that on the foot switch somehow. I'd probably even sacrifice one of the uh, the solo buttons on it. There's two of them. I wouldn't mind sacrificing one of them for uh, uh, for to be able to switch modes. You'd probably need more foot switches. I think the original 90 watt version has. Um, is it six or eight? So it's like a two two rows of um of foot switches that you for you to, to step on. Alright, let's move on to the next one. So the second thing I like about the Mark 535 is that each channel has its own separate controls. You'll notice here, this top row here uh, are the knobs, the controls for the clean channel, and the second row are the controls, or is the controls for the drive channel. All the same controls but they are for each channel. So it's annoying sometimes when you have a dual channel amplifier, but with shared EQ, and sometimes your drive channel, you want it to be EQ'd differently to your clean channel, and it can be a little bit of a nuisance, a little bit annoying. But on this amp, don't have to worry about it because they have their own controls. And that also includes reverb. But not only does it have reverb, it has separate reverb for each channel. 
because sometimes when you have only one reverb, it sounds great on your clean channel, and when you go over to the drive channel, it just is drowning in reverb because there's just more signal there and it doesn't sound as good. So usually for the drive stuff, I want there to be less reverb or maybe even no reverb if you're doing maybe metal. So the reverb controls are on the back and uh, as I said, there are two separate volume knobs or reverb knobs for your, your for both of your channels on this amp and I really like that. So I've currently got my clean channel set to lots of reverb just for demonstration purposes. Uh, and then I'll switch over to the um, drive channel where there's, I think there's no reverb. So let's, uh, let's check this out. So here's the clean and then I'll go straight to the drive channel. There's a real reverb tank in the amp, by the way. So it's not a digital reverb. It's not like a, an emulator reverb. There's an actual reverb uh, spring tank in the middle. So another thing I like about the Mark 535 is that it has switchable voltages. You can go between your 35 watts, 25 watts, and 10 watts. I'm currently on the 10 watt mode at the moment because um, it's it's loud, plenty loud. I've I've played gigs on 20, on 10 watts before so it's quite a loud it's a Mesa Boogie 10 watts which is quite loud I tend to most of the time live on the 25 watt mode uh, on on gigs depending on the gig sometimes the clean will be on 35 watts to give a bit more headroom but to be honest the 25 watts doesn't seem to give me a problem with headroom anyway the cleans are actually pretty pretty damn clean obviously unless you go to the, the crunch mode all right here's 35 watts Twenty five watts. Ten watts. So uh, I'm hoping that comes across on the recording. I can hear it in the room. The 35 to 25 wasn't a massive difference in volume. You can, you can hear it. So that's why I'm wondering if it will come out on, on, on the, uh, through the microphone. So hopefully you could hear that. Uh, 10 watts, I can hear the difference definitely between uh, the, other, the other two, the middle and the higher wattages. Um, but it's still, still quite loud at 10 watts. But not only can you switch the wattage of this amp? You can do it per channel. So if you do want more headroom on your clean channel, you can have that set to 35 watts. And if you want to have more breakup, you can switch it down to 10 watts for the drive channel or anywhere in between. All right, number four. The fourth thing I like about this amp, and these aren't in any particular order, but the next thing I like about it is that it has a solo boost on it. Sometimes you just want that extra volume boost just to kind of cut through uh, uh, through the mix and just to make the solo bit a, a bit louder than your rhythm section, than your rhythm part, uh, and this amp has it. And not only does it have a solo boost, it has a solo boost per channel and is also foot switchable as well. So if you look at these two knobs at the end here, those are your volumes for the solo boost. So the solo boost is essentially a volume boost and you can set the volume of the solo boost to well with these knobs here and the solo boost is one of the main reasons why i preferred to get the mark 535 over the mark 525 the 25 doesn't have a solo boost on it but the 35 does all right number five the fifth thing i like about the mark 535 by mesa boogie is the cab clone out and yes i know a lot of you are typing oh it's horrible um, and I like that it has the option to have a DI out rather than having to bring a microphone to, a, to every gig if you need to have it mic'd up. You've got a, a, something to, to DI, to direct, uh, have a direct out for the signal straight to a mixing desk. It's not as good as other means, but whenever I've used it, it's sounded fine. I haven't actually done a proper test of it to see how it sounds or to hear how it sounds. There are... Recording, I am recording the DI now as well when, I, when I'm playing. Uh, I can't hear it at the moment, but I can hear it in uh, 
while editing and maybe I'll put a little comment uh, on the screen somewhere to tell you what I think of it. But I like that it has the option. I believe this is the original cab clone that they've built in. So there's there's a cab clone 2, which apparently is better. But for the, from the limited times I've actually heard it, it sounded all right. I think it might sound a bit thin, if I remember correctly. Let's play a little bit and then see what the DI sounds like. <laughs> in the comments how the cab clone sounded to you is it as bad as everyone says so those are the five things i like about the mesa boogie mark 535 combo version although i do want to give a special mention uh, a bonus number six i'd like to just mention the graphic eq that they have on there so it's a famous uh, trait of the mark series where they have a, a, a graphic eq with the sliders uh, and they are I'm trying to get this right. They are post. Uh, uh, they are after the preamp, basically. So it's um, uh, an EQ that comes after the all the uh, all of the um, treble, mid, and bass, and so on after the preamp. Uh, so you can sculpt the sound of it after the tone has been initially created. If that makes sense. Maybe I'm being too technical there. I, I tend to only use it on the drive channel. I don't really use it on the clean channel. The clean channel kind of sounds fine as it is. And there's a bit more tonal options on the drive channel. And I tend to kind of, you can see I've got kind of that classic V shape or a, ver a version of it. And I like to kind of scoop those mids out sometimes for a slightly more, arguably more martial -y sound or arguably more Metallica metal sound because they're fam they famously scoop their mids or metal famously scoop the mids. So it depends on my mood. And sometimes I'll even have that as my rhythm channel and just turn off the EQ for like a solo channel because it's it puts the mids back in and it's a lot it's kind of a nice thicker sound again depends on the, on the sound you're going for but having the inclusion of that five band eq really does give you some tonal options and also it's on the foot switch as well so let's check out some tones i'll switch the eq on and off so i'll start off with it off <laughs> So there you go, five things I like about the Mesa Boogie Mark 535, the combo version. What did you think? Let me know in the comments. Some extra things, uh, some other points I like about this amp. Um, the build quality is great, but then you, you come to expect that from Mesa Boogie. They're kind of renowned for their, uh, well, they're a prestigious amp. And the quality, just, just the knobs, just tw twiddling the knobs is really nice because they're quite stiff in a good way. It, they kind of they, they kind of sound feel like they're not going to break anytime soon. Uh, also, this amp is a lot lighter than previous Mesa Boogie amps. They've also had a reputation in in years gone by for being particularly heavy. I think partly because of the speakers they have inside them. They, or at least with this um, combo version, it is a lot lighter than the yeah than the previous ones that I've that I've picked up before. I've got a, a DC three somewhere that is very heavy and it was even heavier when it had when it had the original speaker in it. 
which uh, sadly died and I had to replace it. But the, the, the new speaker was a lot lighter and it, even then it's still quite heavy. So the fact that this one's a lot lighter, it's a lot easier to carry around if, if I'm on a gig. And so it's very convenient having it in, in, a, uh, in a combo format. Although I kind of would like to have it as a head now, to be honest. Hmm. Uh, something I'm, I'm, me personally, I'm not so keen on. I, I find that it's lacking a bit of bottom end, which is part in part why I bought the extension cabinet to kind of add a bit more oomph at the bottom. I'm not the only one to say this about some Mesa Boogie amps. I'm, I'm not sure if it's just this amp or if it's the speaker that's in there, but I did find it kind of missing some of that that bottom end, uh, which is why I tend to prefer using two by twelve cabinets live now if I'm if I'm not on any monitors. Yeah, let me know. Do you, did you? Does anyone else have that issue with Mesa Boogie amps, particularly this one? Is there a, a lack of bottom end? Is it gonna? Is there more bottom end when you turn the volume when you start cranking the volume? Kind of like in Marshalls, because Marshalls had a history, had a reputation, and I've experienced this as well of sounding a bit shrill. But that's because I tended to have them at a lower, play them at a lower volume because I'm somewhere where you can't turn the volume up. Uh, but when you do crank them, they that, then it brings the body back and just sounds amazing. So let me know your experiences in the comments below as well. And finally, this amp is loud. Uh, and again, Mesa Boogie have a reputation for making amps that are very loud. And this one is very loud. I tend to have it on the 25 watt mode for both channels when I'm, when I'm using this. And I play in the jam night sometimes where it's quite a, quite a loud band, or at least the drum was quite loud. And, and his, uh, drum, his kick drum is also mic'd up as well. So it really comes it really comes out loud and this amp kind of was able to keep up with it. I tend to have my earplugs in so I'm probably cranking it louder than, than people would like but it means I can hear it and it means I can crank it a bit more and get it working and hopefully sounding nicer as well. But in terms of volume no problem with this amp whatsoever. So I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found that informative. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below uh, and I'll see you in the next video next week. Take care of yourself, have a good week.